here is what any phone can do. And here is what a handcrafted model for image recognition can do. Employee Daniel recognized. In 10 minutes, we'll build our own face recognition system in Python from scratch. The concept is known as one-shot learning, and it's different from traditional image recognition models in a sense that you are only required to have one picture of the person whom you want to recognize, and you don't need to train a model to recognize this person. If you have an iPhone, you might recall the moment when you first unpacked it and set up your face ID. It only took one or maybe a few pictures of your face and that was it. And those pictures were not used to train any machine learning model. How does this work? Well, there is a pre-trained model inside your phone. It had seen many different faces. It was trained not to recognize a particular face, but instead to represent a picture as a set of numeric embeddings. This model is capable to accept a new picture, break it down into its components, and remember facial characteristics. So when this person appears in front of the camera next time, the model will map their face to the previously uploaded picture, and if there is a match, it will unlock the phone, the computer, the door, or execute any other business logic encoded inside the program. Some very sophisticated sophisticated pre-trained models like this are available in the open source which you can just download and use in your particular application. In our example, we'll use one of these models and build our own face recognition system that will recognize 10 different employees at the office entrance. This is a separate data science domain and below I'll provide all the required links to study this particular subject in detail. But if you know nothing about it and want to quickly and effectively become a data scientist, a complete roadmap is spelled out in my most popular video so far. Now let's dive in. All the code for this tutorial is available at the dedicated repository. A link below. It contains everything including a complete face recognition script. But if you want to code along, just download only the requirements, the model folder and the program skeleton. Let's create a new working directory and place our downloaded objects here. For all the new projects and research, I'd like to create a fresh virtual environment with a clean copy of Python so I won't mess up the other dependencies I have on my machine. And you can do this using a virtual ant package just by creating a fresh version of Python and then activating this virtual environment and installing the requirements. If you don't know what this means, just don't bother, skip this step, this is not going to make any difference for you. Before we write any code, let's plan what a program needs to do. So we are creating a face recognition system that will work at the office building entrance and will open the gate to the employees whose pictures are in the company database. I like to start by defining placeholders for all the functions that we'll need to code up, so this sort of a program skeleton will make the coding process much easier. Our program is going to consist of seven functions, so the first one is loading the saved model and there is nothing special about it, so I have it defined here already. The next one will convert an image into an embedding vector using this model, so it will take a picture and represent it by its learned characteristics. The initialize database function will take all the pictures of our employees, run them through the model, represent them by numeric embeddings, and store them in a database. In our case, this is just going to be a dictionary with an employee name and their embedding. Get image from camera is going to utilize the camera that I have available in the system. In this case, it's just the webcam that I have connected to my computer. Identify person function will execute the logic of comparing the picture taken from camera to the pictures stored inside the database. Of course, both of them will be compared when they are converted to their numerical embeddings with the model. Recognize face from camera is the main function that will trigger all these functions right here. And this last function here, add a new user to database, will just add new people that become new employees to the database easily. It will just automate this process. It will take their picture, record their name and store it inside the database. And up here we have the necessary dependencies that we need to have installed in order for this program to run. So let's start with image to encoding. Basically what it does is it grabs the image from your hard drive uh, normalizes it, runs it through the model and gets an embedding and then represents it as a vector and then it returns the vector or, or the numerical representation of the image. So let's encode some image with this function. One thing I forgot is to upload the pictures of our employees. So here they are and I've got 10 employees here. All these people are working in our company and we need our program to open the door every time any one of them will enter the building. So let's use the first employee here and see how his face is going to be encoded by our image to encoding function. Open an interactive Python window, load up our libraries, and in order to execute the image to encoding function, we need to define this function within this workspace and load the save model also needs to be used because we need a model uh, and an image path in order to execute image to encoding functions. So we've got all of our libraries already 
in the environment and we have defined the two functions. So next thing we need to do is load the model. Path to this employee picture is employees and their name. And we also need to pass a model in here. I made a mistake here. So the order of this function needs to be two. And uh, once again, let's do the image to encoding. Here is the picture and here is how the model represents this picture or this person's facial characteristics. Okay, let's define the next function. So that is initialize a database. Our database is just going to be a dictionary. And what we need to do next is to take every picture from our employees folder, run it through the model using the image to encoding and store it in this database dictionary. And that's it, we'll return the database as a result of this function execution. So the next one is get image from camera. And for this purpose, I'm using the CV2 library. And um, let's just code it up. First thing we need to do is indicate a cam port or the interface of where your camera is connected to your machine. And let's define this here as the default argument because I only have one camera and one port it is connected to. So we'll store whatever is captured using our camera into the cam variable. A good idea for executing the follow-up logic is to give it one second to sleep because you might need some time to warm up your camera depending on the camera you're using and uh, you might not have enough time between the this function right here and the next logic that is going to follow so after we've got an image stored in the cam variable we need to unpack it if the image was captured successfully we want to well as a first step let's have a look at our image so the way this works, after you have displayed the image, in order for this program not to freeze, you want to indicate the time of the image to be displayed on your screen and then uh, for this image window to be destroyed. And uh, this is how you do it. All right, so this is done. The next function is identify person. And here we basically need to code up logic that will compare the two images, one taken from the camera right now at the spot and, uh, and the second picture is going to come from the database or all the pictures within the database because we don't know who is coming. Uh, and we've got a database of 10 people. So whoever comes to the camera, uh, their picture will be taken and it will be compared to all the pictures in the database and uh, the closest match will hopefully be returned. And this function will accept uh, an image path that we need to identify the database and the model. The first thing we need to do is to encode this image that it accepts. And we're going to use our image to encoding function that we have defined previously. So incoming person image encoding. Sorry for the long name, but I prefer the names to be meaningful so that you will not get confused within your program the next time around. Okay, we've got an embedding of our image that is at the gate. How do we compare the, these two vectors? Well, basically by comparing the distances between the vectors. Within this function, we are going to define the, the distance between images variable as a very large number at the very beginning. We've got our distance between the, say, the first employee in the database and the incoming person. And if this distance is smaller to the very large number that we have defined at the beginning, distance between images, our system will think that this current employee is the, the one with the best match. And as it goes through all the other employees and if the distances between those employees and this incoming image are going to be smaller then you know it will update its understanding of who is at the gate now let's just finish this the way that this works right now is that we'll just mathematically calculate the distance between the picture of the person that is at the gate to all the pictures that are in the database and we'll just return the match of the smallest distance but this does not necessarily mean that this person that is at the gate it really is one of our employees we'll just see what is the smallest distance so maybe he may look alike like somebody else but not alike enough in order for us to identify them as our employee. We need to add some logic that uh, our distance has to be not more than a certain threshold value for the system to recognize this, this person as one of our employees. When you run your experiment, you can try different values. And for this particular one, I have come up with a value of 0 0.7. So let's just do that. If this distance is higher than the threshold that I've defined this 0 0.7 over here, then uh, we're just going to print to the security guard at the entrance that we're not sure that this person is really one of our employees. And we're, we're going to say that maybe it is this guy right here. And then the security guard can double check. 
Otherwise, we recognize this person as our employee and we just let them through. So we're going to say um, employee identify. And let's also add some voiceover. Hopefully this is done and let's code up the last two functions. So the main function to recognize face from camera, they will just execute this logic right here and the last function to add new user to database. This actually is going to be quick because we've already defined all the functions that do everything that we need. So the first thing we need to do is get the image from camera. So since our program works with images stored locally, we need to temporarily save this image somewhere on our system. After this is done, we'll run the identify person function that we've just defined on that image. And we have a hard coded name for every person that comes at the gate. So face to recognize is always going to be the name of this file, which we will then delete. And we really did not need to add this database and model arguments to this function right here because we can just use them as globals, but let's just keep them here. It's not going to make any difference. And after the identification process is over, we need to remove this face to recognize object. So the last function we need to code is adding a new user to database. Define the name of the person that the picture is being taken off. And then we get their image from camera and save their image with their appropriate name into the images folder and add them to the database. Okay, so everything is hopefully done. Let's now test our system. We'll use the interactive window here just to see the result right away. Okay, the model loaded successfully. Now we need to initialize our database. So in other words, we will take all our images of all our employees and encode them and store them in the database dictionary. I forgot to run all these functions so that we'll initialize them so that our interpreter here in the interactive window will know that these functions exist. This is our database. So this is a person, our employee, and their encoded numerical representation or embedding. Now let's simulate the situation where I'm the new employee. I just got hired. So this is my first day. I came to the office taking my picture to add me to the to the database of users so I could be led through the gate tomorrow. As I run this function right here, you can see that it's asking for my name as an input. And let's also minimize this so we can see the picture that will be taken. So I'm going to add my name. As you can see, the picture has been taken. And now this is the next day. I'm coming to the office and I'm at the gate. Hopefully it will recognize me. Okay, it's taking Hello, my, Daniel. It's taking my picture and now we can see that it has recognized my name. Let's try once again, only this time I'll hide my face behind this newspaper. Okay, so it says not sure, maybe it's Daniel. The reason it has partially recognized me is because I'm in the same place. I have the same green screen behind me. I'm wearing the same white t-shirt. Uh, and uh, this is one of the flaws of this model because we've done this quickly. And uh, this is one of the potential improvements. So uh, basically you have to cut out the 160 by 6, 160 face and store that as your employee picture. And every time a new picture is taken, also from the whole image, from that camera, you need to cut out the only only the face and then compare those two. That means regardless of the place where the picture has been taken, it's going to only recognize your face and not any surroundings. We've just successfully built a face recognition system with under 100 lines of code. Current example is a good starting point for any similar project you might have in mind. To make it complete, you need a few improvements. An obvious one would be extracting the part of the image with the actual face on it. This way you're not going to be classifying the surroundings, but the actual person that you're trying to recognize. And you can also do this by using the pre-trained open source models that are trained to detect faces on an image. A more critical improvement is the human presence detection mechanism. Our current implementation can be easily tricked by just holding up the picture of the person in front of the camera. Production-grade face recognition systems must have at least one additional verification layer that will confirm the actual human presence in front of the camera, and only then it will run the face recognition pattern. But this is a topic for a separate video.